is uh, Professor Dr. Saeed Khan, and I'm heading the Molecular Pathology Department. Today, we are going to discuss about the genetic techniques, including PCR, FISH, that is fluorescein in situ hybridization, and different blotting techniques. So these techniques are very much important in genetics. If you have to identify any of the genetic disease, if you want to know the normal phenomena of genetics, how genetics works. So these techniques are very much important. So we need to pay attention to uh, the basic of these techniques so we can understand and learn how these techniques uh, can be used when it is needed. So there are different blotting techniques, including southern blotting, northern blotting, western blotting, and uh, then we have different other techniques like RFLP resection length polymorphism, fluorescein in situ hybridization, and the polymerase reaction. These are some of the genetic techniques which can be used uh, in, in the field of genetics to understand the genetic and genetic diseases. So we will try to know what are the blotting uh, techniques, what is DNA, RNA, and proteins, uh, fingerprinting, and how these techniques can be used. But before we uh, proceed for the complexity of these techniques, we need to know the ABC of the genetics or the basic building blocks of the DNA material that is called nucleotides. So the four alphabets of the genetics are the nucleotide, which are called adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, or in short, AGCT. These are the four alphabets with which nature has written the whole book of life. So the whole book of life is written with these four letters. Only four letters make the whole life. Like we have 26 alphabet in English literature, and then you have different chapters, different books, and different literature and you have the whole literature of the uh, English uh, with these four, with the four letters. So similarly, we have these four letters in, in biology with, with understand the language, we can know the phenomena. So in further details, if you come to the genetic material that resides inside the tiny cell, and even in this tiny cell, a tinier nucleus, which carries the chromosome. In human cell, we have 46 chromosomes. So these 46 chromosomes are nothing but DNA, and the DNA is nothing but those four letters. With different arrangement and length of these letter makes a particular meaningful sentence, which is called gene. So gene is the continuation of the, just like a sentence in English literature, which is combination of 26 letter and make a sense of uh, a meaning of that particular sentence. So in here, we have these four letter combination of four letters, which makes sense in terms of a protein. We call it is coding a protein. So these four letters combine together and code a protein which is called this particular region of the DNA, which is coding a protein is called gene. So we have 46 chromosome in human cells, which makes, if you unwind the whole 46 chromosome, it makes a two meter of DNA in a single cell, which makes 3 billion nucleotide. If you count all the nucleotide and all the chromosome in the human cell, it makes 3 billion nucleotides. So you can understand how huge genetic data we have in a single cell and none of the nucleotide is non um, meaningless. It has some meaning. So, so far we have uh, about more than 30,000 gene identified, uh, which is, which are coding for these uh, proteins are meaningful uh, proteins which could be uh, structural protein or functional proteins. 
So the genetic material dictate everything and it makes sense. Similarly, if uh, you can go and see the English literature and the combination of the alphabets, if you have any spelling change or mistake, it's changed the entire meaning. Uh, this is just an example, not a real story, but an example. If you see the, the four letters, there is a single nuclear uh, alphabet change B replaced with S, and you see the whole scenario is changed. The rest of the spelling is same, but only one alphabet is changed. And you can see the, uh, the story is entirely changed. So same is the uh, genetic signature. If someone has particular genetic signature, it remains the same with that particular person. And uh, in the world, one can change his name. Like this guy can change his name with this if he want, uh, uh, legally if it is allowed, so he can. But practically, the, the, the nature has a particular signature or name in terms of DNA and genetic material, which remain the same. So you can identify a person with this genetic material. So this genetic material language or the uh, reading of the language of these alphabet is very much interesting and important. Like I, I give an example, if you have a spelling change or mistake, you have changed the entire meaning or the personality in this case. And similarly, if the uh, genetic process make a mistake, we call it mutation or changes, it can bring good or bad change. It depends on the, the the severity of the mutation, how severe that mutation is, it can bring a change in that particular person, which may lead to a disease or lethal disease, or maybe bringing a new trait, but and bringing a change. And we can detect if we know the meaning of uh, these alphabets and genetics. So how genetics works, the genetics works, the DNA is, is the master molecule, we have the DNA, which replicates itself using its own template. And we have like a, a cell has to divide. The first thing is to replicate the DNA. We need another copy of the DNA for the new cell. So first the DNA need to be replicated. So we have two copies of DNA and, and bigger sense, we have two copies of the chromosomes, which means duplication of the, or replication of the DNA and each copy then transfer to the new daughter cell. So the, all the information lies in the DNA inside the nucleus, which are then transcribed or transfer in terms of RNA. We call it RNA, this messenger RNA. The, the, the master molecule is the uh, DNA inside the nucleus, which transfer the message through messenger RNA. And the message must be exactly the same as in template on the DNA. If there's any change in this message, as I gave an example earlier, it's, it's mean you're altering any of the alphabet of the four letters and the meaning would be entirely changed. So it should be intact and similar as in this uh, uh, DNA sequence. So we should need uh, to find the same message and the DNA. So then we have an RNA, which is uh, going into the cytoplasm and combined with the ribosome and then translated into protein. So the active uh, molecule are protein on, uh, which could be some structural protein making a structure of the cell, uh, muscle cells or neuron, or you have uh, hepatocytes, blood cells. They, are, they have different proteins on, on, on these cells like uh, you have HLA types, you have different enzymes, you have different hormones. Those are proteins which are coded by their particular respective messenger RNA and which is transcribed on the particular gene on the DNA. So messages coming from DNA, if the message is intact, it's transferred into on the messenger RNA and translated into protein. So this is called the central dogma of molecular biology. This is the whole story of the genetics. So at any stage, if these four letters getting changed, then it's leading to uh, disease condition, maybe lethal, maybe in some, in some cases we have different variety of the trait or different characteristics that could be uh, 
positive as well. And in some cases could be negative impact. So we need to understand these story of four letters. The whole thing is based on these four letters. The adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. They have different uh, combination coding for different uh, amino acid and they, those amino acids makes the protein. So <clears throat> the molecular diagnostic uh, is a, a, a huge uh, area. Uh, the genetic testing is right uh, starting from the prenatal before the, the child is born and the womb of the mother. We can access to the blood of the mother and identify if there is something wrong in the blood of the mother and uh, the, the, uh, the maternal, but also have the uh, mm, the DNA of the, uh, the the fetus, so we can identify any of the genetic changes in the blood as well. We can go, get access to the growing embryo. We can uh, collect some sample from the embryo and can predict if there's anything wrong going on wrong with the with the child or the baby inside the womb. So at that level, we can detect things. And the base would be those four letters, the rearrangement of the four letters are right or wrong. And then the story is going on, going on even after the, the, the birth of the child, we can find if anything is right or wrong, and we can predict diseases, we can identify any of the infectious diseases later on, genetic diseases, we can identify and monitor the, the progress of the treatment. So like hepatitis C is, uh, viral infection. So we can detect if the genetic material of the hepatitis C is there in the, the patient. And if a physician is giving a treatment and that treatment is effective or not, so we can uh, detect the viral load. So these molecular tools are very much important and different aspect, even in genetics, infectious disease, or any of the uh, biological phenomena that is occurring in, in the human cell or in the human body. So, and this is a growing uh, industry as well, not only as serving as a tool of diagnostics or uh, in field of genetics, but the different other field as well. So we can identify uh, an infectious disease and we can fi find out the solid tumor disease, any cancer, which is causing by these four letters, genetic diseases, different like Huntington disease, or any of the Down syndrome, we can detect uh, through these techniques. Then we can identify the um, paternity uh, confirmation that uh, uh, the child belongs to who's, uh, which parent. So that can be resolved through these techniques. And then we have different hematological disorder, which can be resolved and identified through these molecular tools. So one of the techniques that we need to discuss is the, the blotting techniques. So blotting could be of three types, when, uh, which is uh, southern blot, which is to detect the DNA. Then we have northern blot, which means to detect the RNA. And then western blot, that is to detect a protein. So these names are like a southern blot is not uh, the, the, the direction, rather it was the name of a scientist uh, uh, his name was Edwin Southern, uh, who developed this technique in 1975 and to detect the DNA. And uh, later on, the other techniques were named just because the one technique was uh, Southern uh, after his name for DNA. Then when the uh, technique for RNA was developed, it was named Northern blot. And later on, when the technique for protein was the develop then it was named as western blot so southern blot is a, a technique uh, which we can explain in this uh, slide is to we extract and separate the dna we first isolate the dna we, then we need to separate on the across gel <clears throat> dna is a negative charge that so move towards the the, the positive polarity in the electric field when you provide the electric uh, current and the uh, aqueous medium so it moves towards its opposite pole and based on the molecular weight it travels faster or slower the the, the bigger the uh, uh, fragment of the dna the slower the movement uh, and the gel we call it uh, a gross gel 
uh, which provide the, the passage for the DNA fragment to move inside uh, in under the electric field or the electric current. So the molecule are immobilized on the matrix. Then the probe is uh, provided uh, that would bind its complementary strand. Uh, the four letter story is just like uh, complementary binding, like uh, we, uh, if we have uh, adenine, it would bind with thymine. And if we have uh, uh, guanine, it will bind with cytosine. So A always make a pair with T and G with C, vice versa. So with this uh, principle, we can uh, predict if uh, our probe has a particular sequence that would bind and find it out its uh, complementary fragment on the DNA and will fix and attach with that. And probe we label with some uh, spying molecule or a fragment uh, that can fly <clears throat> and identify that the DNA is there. So probe is nothing but the complementary fragment on the original DNA and label with some uh, <clears throat> dye or molecule which can be visualized on the membrane. <clears throat> So this is uh, the cartoon of the process. We have a DNA, which is uh, restricted with the enzyme, uh, cut with the enzyme, then it is migrated on the agrose gel. And according to the molecular weight, you can see the bigger the molecule on the upper side and uh, the uh, smaller the molecule on the lower side. After this separation or migration, we transfer this uh, fragment of DNA on the membrane, the nitrocellulose membrane, and that is immobilization of the DNA fragment on the membrane. So this is sort of a filter. So once they are transferred, then we provide the, the probe. This is the probe which will uh, bind with complementary fragment. So this fragment would complementary. Complement mean if it is uh, uh, adenine, we must have thymine here. Uh, we want to uh, detect the G on the template. We must have C over here. So with this principle, we uh, label our uh, targeted uh, fragment, which attached with its uh, complementary basis. And if, if this is a radioactive molecule that label with the probe, when you expose to the radiation, it will give a band or a dot which is called a blot so you, when you develop this whole thing you will get such sort of band so this is summarization of the whole process they uh, first uh, take a dna separate it on the gel move, uh, transfer on the membrane immobilize it and then label with the probe and at the end you see these fragment which uh, you know that the the particular sequence of the dna is there and it has some meaning you must know in advance that the fragment that you are going to detect, what does it mean? Like if this fragment is uh, significant in terms of uh, any disease, any mutation, any change, then you can uh, give this particular uh, interpretation to this uh, fragment. So it could be like any infectious disease, it could be any genetic disease based on the sequence that you have already known. So where we can apply these techniques, the, the southern blot technique, we can identify any gene. We can map a gene or DNA, which gene is where. So the fragment that we uh, know in advance and we can find the, 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 um, uh, the mapping of those fragments and the meaning of the, those fragments. Then we can find evolution, that particular uh, uh, Repetition, like just for example, sometimes this uh, repeated sequences are found on different uh, species and it's uh, like jumping uh, genes or the satellite DNA or repeated sequences, particular uh, sequences we can identify that in particular species, uh, this, this specific sequences are found in that much frequency and that uh, at that particular position and different humans uh, uh, samples where we can identify those. So this can uh, lead to a meaning of evolution as well. Then developmental studies, uh, diagnostics, as I mentioned, we can diagnose different infectious, non-infectious and genetic diseases. 
then we can use in forensic the 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 dna fingerprinting, fingerprinting that is usually used the phenomena uh, that is uh, and real the basic is the southern blot technique so this can be used and then the rflp technique there is signal fragment length polymorphism it can also be used <clears throat> The other technique that we have is the northern blot. That is the technique that is used for the RNA detection. And the name is just like uh, southern blot was uh, named after a uh, scientist, but the, the northern uh, technique was not after the name of the scientist, but just to uh, make it uh, similar, similar name with the southern. So it, it was given name northern blot. So it is a technique through which we can detect specific sequence of RNA and its uh, intensity or quantity as well. So it is the same technique, uh, just the difference is that in, we are detecting the RNA. So the RNA is separated on the agro, uh, agro gel and the same way it is migrated under the electric field, then immobilized on the membrane. And then the probe is provided to bind its respective fragment on the membrane and it is visualized because of the any uh, colored molecule or if it is radioactive label probe so under the uv it will uh, under the uh, the x-ray or radiation it will give a black, black spot or the color spot that's why it's called a blot so we can visualize this so this is the the summary of the technique, uh, similar like uh, southern blot, but it uh, is detecting, uh, is used for detection of RNA, and the rest of the uh, uh, principle is almost the same. So these are the particular fragment of the RNA which uh, was uh, probed, and the probe was uh, complementary to this fragment. And these fragment, like in one sample, this probe attached to this uh, sequence, these sequences are the same, but their position are different. That's why the meaning could be different. So the application of the Northern blot is to detect the RNA and then what meaning uh, of the RNA detection. If it is of diagnostic value, you can use its diagnostics. And if you want to detect any, like how long the RNA survive in the sample, you can uh, uh, resample a different interval and you can find that uh, this, the RNA is there or not. So you can detect the uh, messenger RNA transcript size, how big or small the size is, and study of RNA degradation for how long the RNA and splicing phenomena as the cutting of the, the RNA, um, RNA maturation, we can also identify that and is to study the half-life of the RNA and to uh, find uh, if the, the gene is there or not, has been knocked out or not. Sometimes we need to find the function of the RNA or a gene, we remove that. So, uh, if, which is called knockout. The knockout mice mean if a particular gene is removed or the function of that particular gene has been removed from there. A particular animal we call it knockout mice so to confirm the gene has been knocked out or not we need to detect its rna so if its rna is not there it means that gene has been knocked out and you will run in a parallel and control where which means that rna must be there so we can also uh, study the effect of a drug if we have to develop a new drug and we, we which we are expecting that that uh, will affect a particular gene or suppress that gene or increase the product of that RNA. So we can also uh, use this technique for uh, RNA or uh, gene function as well. Then we have Western blotting. Western blotting is a technique which is the use for the detection or quantification of the protein. Uh, the Western blot is another technique of molecular technique which is used for uh, Mm, protein detection. It's a little bit different. The molecule is different. It's not a nucleic acid, it's a protein. So the uh, protein sample is uh, denatured and it's been uh, uh, run on the uh, polyacrylamide gel. In case of RNA and DNA, the, the gel is used, which is called a gross gel. In this case, 
uh, SDS page, sodium dediosyl sulfate, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. The protein are uh, run on the uh, polyacrylamide gel separated. Same, same like uh, in case of DNA, but in that case, we use the agrogel and here we use the SDS page. And after the separation, the rest of the story is a bit similar. That's the uh, bands are transferred on the membrane and they uh, label with the uh, antibody because protein are antigen in nature. So in this case, we will provide the antibody against that particular protein, which are labeled with some enzyme or some uh, label a molecule so we can detect uh, the presence in the similar way like we did in uh, earlier in case of rna and dna so western blot can be used for detection of protein and to identify uh, their masses how bigger are the protein in size and like uh, we can use it for hiv confirmation uh, the particular protein of HIV, GP120, any other HIV protein, we can identify and confirm that this particular patient is positive with HIV. Uh, we can find out any genetic uh, diseases which pro particular protein are uh, responsible for. So different other diseases, uh, infectious, non-infectious diseases, we can identify and we can uh, check the uh, altered protein. In some cases, the protein get altered and change and we can identify those protein as well. There are some video, but I don't think so it will be run. So then we have a few other techniques uh, like uh, RFLP, restriction fragment length polymorphism. It's uh, a bit similar to the technique that we discuss uh, like uh, in Southern blot. In this case, the DNA is, is the combination of four letters. As I mentioned earlier, they, all the genetic uh, data is based on the four letter A, G, C, T. So the DNA's particular signatures, uh, it's, if you can understand the meaning, it's just like alphabet. Like if you see a T, K, it's a meaning, and G, A, T mean get, it's a meaning. Okay, so that that is in English literature. So the same way, uh, GGCT, TTTTC, this is a meaning. So an enzyme called a recession uh, an enzyme, endonuclease enzyme, it identify a particular fragment of the DNA and cut it. So in normal human DNA, if you take the beta globin gene, this particular enzyme called DDL enzyme, it identify the DNA and make four cuts and the beta globin gene in the normal DNA. Like this red arrow, you can identify at this particular fragment of DNA, sequence of DNA. It's the cut site for this particular enzyme. And these are the similar sequence, like in here, like here, here, here. So at this position, this enzyme will make a cut. It means this particular sequence of the DNA exists on this normal DNA. And if you cut this uh, uh, DNA with the DEL enzyme, you will get three fragments. Like if you have four cut side, it means this fragment, one, two, and three. You, got, you will get four, three fragments when you run on the agrose gel. But in, in case of uh, sickle cell anemia, there's a single nucleotide chain. The single nucleotide chain leads to change one of the cut side. This uh, cut site uh, alter because of one of nucleotide get changed. Like if the CAT is the spelling of K. So if you remove or replace the, the, the A between C and T, so it's no more meaning of K. If you replace A with O or something else, so it's no more meaning uh, of the K. So similarly in here, the, the one of the nucleotide get changed, this enzyme not going to cut that particular side and you will get how many fragment now? You have three cuts, that's mean you will get two fragments. So these two fragments means that that genetic changes occurred. As I mentioned, there's a spelling mistake or change in this particular fragment and you are getting two fragments. So the, the getting two fragments is meaningful in term 
if you know that the cut side is being changed, we have nothing to do with the cut side or not cut side. We need to identify this sequence chain, that mutation chain. So this enzyme can help us to identify this. The genetic material has been changed. The mutation has occurred, which lead to sickle cell anemia. So you can understand a single spelling change in English literature can make sort of disaster meaning of that word. And in here, in the genetics, a single nucleotide chain leads to a severe genetic disease like sickle cell anemia. So in here, you get two fragment. And this is what is a genetic disease. Is. So this is the uh, RFLV that you take the DNA and you run on the gross gel. Uh, uh, after uh, treating with this particular enzyme, uh, which is a restriction enzyme, Indian nuclease enzyme, and it will make cut uh, the particular site. And any of the uh, specific restrict, we call it restriction site. So any of the restriction sites uh, change because of the uh, spelling mistake or the mutation, it will lead to alter that cut site. So in this case, we have three fragments. It's a normal DNA of human. And here we have the sickle cell anemia patient DNA, which has two uh, fragment because one uh, restriction site has been changed. So similarly, we can use this uh, DNA and uh, forensic or identification of the suspect uh, or from the crime scene or any uh, murder case or rape case, or uh, sometimes we use it in the crash, uh, plane crash to identify the bodies belong to which uh, family. So this uh, technique can be used in there as well. So we take a DNA from suspect and from the crime scene or from any event scene, we can compare and we can identify that the uh, DNA belong to which family or suspect or the crime scene. So we can identify in forensic as well. Then we have a technique called uh, polymerase chain reaction or the PCR in short, which is the amplification of the particular fragment of DNA it is very powerful technique and currently you are uh, um, uh, witness that this technique being used in variety of infectious and non-infectious disease, genetic diseases. It's a very useful technique and a very easy technique and uh, uh, now it's been uh, very commercialized so um, it's not that much expensive as well. But it's a new version of uh, like real-time PCR then we have other uh, numbers of uh, variety of PCR, which is revolutionized the, the field of diagnosis, genetics, and uh, it's uh, diverted the field of uh, uh, other areas as well, like research. You can identify or do research on different gene, gene function. So these... Uh, Techniques uh, like uh, the PCR to target any specific region of the DNA, which is uh, meaningful for you. We need uh, nucleotide, the building blocks, then we need primers, which will bind with the respective uh, uh, site that the gene that we are uh, interested to identify. Then we need uh, the specific primer, the reverse and the forward primer, then we need the master enzyme and for this reaction called the TAC polymerase. T acute means thermosequaticus and polymerase means the enzyme which polymerize the nucleotide. So thermosequaticus is an in uh, bacteria which is found in a uh, boiling springs. That means that bacteria can survive in a very hot environment. And in this technique, we increase the temperature up to 95 degrees centigrade. So we need an enzyme which can survive at that high temperature. So scientists identify that these bacteria has the um, polymerase. Human and all other species also have the uh, polymerase enzyme, but those enzymes cannot survive. Like we cannot survive at 95 degrees centigrade. And so our enzyme cannot survive. So uh, scientists uh, isolate and identify this uh, enzyme from Thermos aquaticus bacteria. And now they have synthesized it and used in this reaction. Then we have uh, magnesium chloride as a cofactor for the enzyme, the buffer environment, and the thermocycler machine or PCR machine. So 
there are different steps and uh, direction. This is a denaturation to uh, make the two strands apart from each other called denaturation. Usually it's occur at the 95 degrees centigrade mean to uh, detach the hydrogen bonds or break the hydrogen bond between the two nucleotide across the strands, the two um, strands of the duplex. And then uh, lower the temperature um, regarding the uh, melting temperature of the primers, which is uh, based on their GC or uh, gone in cytosine, we call GC content. Usually it's between 50 to 60 degrees centigrade. The higher the GC in the primer, the higher will be the melting temperature. And based on the melting temperature is usually five degrees less than that uh, melting temperature. The annealing temperature is uh, the temperature at which the primer binder with the template. Then we have another uh, third step of the PCR, which is called extension or polymerization, uh, at which the enzyme tag polymerase bind with the primer and add nucleotide to the grooving strand and polymerize it. So this is the summary of the technique in this cartoon. You have the DNA, the double stranded DNA, which is denatured at 95 degrees centigrade and the two strands are apart from each other. This is uh, denaturation. Then the primer bind with its respective uh, complementary strand. This is forward primer, reverse primer on each strand. And uh, this temperature is lower than the 95, usually 50 or 55. Then the enzyme type polymerase bind with the primer and a new nucleotide on each strand. And you now you have two new strand. Uh, initially it was one and now you have two. And this is called cycle. Cycle mean denaturation annealing extension or elongation. And the same is repeated again and again. The more the cycle in the PCR, the more the fragment you will get the copy of the DNA. So in the same thing is repeating in here is a sub video, but I don't think so it will be played. Let's see if it can be played. It's not playing. So then we have another technique called polyfluorescent and C2 hybridization. So fish, uh, is not the one that you eat at your lunch or dinner. It's the abbreviation of the fluorescent in situ hybridization. It's another technique, which is hybridization technique. It's uh, different than uh, PCR. In PCR, you amplify a, a DNA. And why we amplify? Because we, we don't see the DNA in, in, in a real. We can't see it with the naked eye. We can't detect a single uh, gene copy or single viral, uh, the PCR that is used now, you are aware of the coronavirus PCR, the COVID PCR or RT-PCR. So RT-PCR uh, is the uh, type of the PCR, the same like PCR, but RT means reverse transcriptase. So we, uh, if the starting material is RNA, just in case of uh, viruses like COVID, uh, either the causative agent is coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, which is an RNA virus. So the RNA must be converted first into DNA. And that step is called reverse transcription. The transcription is uh, from DNA to make RNA is a normal transcription. And reverse of this is would be DNA from RNA. Making DNA from RNA is a reverse transcription. The enzyme responsible for this is called reverse transcriptase. So the reverse transcriptase is an enzyme which convert the RNA into cDNA, which we call it complementary DNA or cDNA. So the RT-PCR in, in case of hepatitis C, in RT-PCR in case of hepatitis D or Delta virus. In coronavirus, we also have this um, RT-PCR. So those, those, there are two types of RT-PCR. We call it reverse antis, uh, PCR and real-time PCR. So uh, real-time PCR is the one which is uh, the progress of the um, PCR you can see on the screen. You don't need to run on the gross gel. You can see on the computer the progress in real time. That's why you call a real-time PCR. So then we have a fish, fluorescent in situ hybridization technique. And uh, in, in this, we target the DNA inside the cell. We don't uh, disturb the whole structure of the cell. Um, because it is meaningful. We just not only identify the, the gene or the fragment of DNA, but we also quantify in, uh, inside the cell that where that, that DNA is, uh, exists. And if we have thousands of cells, 
So we need to identify in which cell that particular uh, fragment is found. If it is in all cells, we can see under the microscope that all cells uh, uh, indicating the presence of those fragments. And if it is present in few of the cells, so one cell will have uh, that fragment, the probe will uh, tell us that the DNA is there. And if it is not in all cells, so there are many of cell will be there which don't have these fragments. So we can identify, identify chromosomal abnormality. We can find that the chromosome exists or not, the length uh, being increased or short. We can uh, study the chromosomes. It's basically painting of the uh, chromosome. We can paint the, the chromosome at a particular site and that uh, color tell us the, the mapping of the gene that which gene exists where and the copies of the gene are increased or duplicated or replicated or not. So we can use it to identify the presence of location of a region of DNA or RNA within the morphologically preserved chromosome preparation fixed cells <laughs> or tissue section. So this is how the, the slide of the fish looks like. Uh, we can do a seg uh, segment of the our entire chromosome with, uh, with our own eyes. And usually it is the M phase, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the cell division we can, because at that stage we can see the chromosome very uh, visual, we can visualize easily. And advantage is the less uh, laborious and uh, intensive method for the confirming the presence of a DNA segment within an entire genome. Uh, then other conventional methods like southern blotting is comparatively uh, laborious for work and rather the fish. You can see this uh, two color, uh, one is green and one, one is purple. So you have painted uh, one fragment with the red and one with the green. So these are two different labels and this uh, cartoon you can see easily this is the the nucleus uh, we have chromosome and we have the nature of the particular fragment and we sent our uh, probe uh, denature it immobilize and then it's uh, bind with the particular fragment of the dna and if that particular fragment is there this probe will bind and this probe is labeled with some color we can uh, like in case of HER2, uh, this is one of the gene which is uh, amplified in case of in, uh, breast cancer. So if the HER2 is amplified, that HER2 gene uh, probe will bind with those uh, gene products, uh, the gene uh, segment, fragments. So the first thing is to denature the chromosome, denature the probe, hybridization of both the probe and uh, the, the chromosome and then uh, fluorescent staining, and then examine slide under the microscope, the fluorescent microscope. So this is the whole process the, we have to fix the sample on the, the slide, then immobilize on the slide, then hybridize with the fluorescently label uh, oligo, that is the complementary fragment of the DNA against the chromosome fragment, and watch the slide or optimize it, then counter stain with the DAPI, which by uh, um, color the nuclei and then it anti bleaching mount is the process you don't need to go in details of the process just to uh, understand the uh, how it is happened and then we see under the fluorescent microscope and this is what we see this is the DAPI staining or the nucleus are stained in with the DAPI color this is the green uh, fluorescent and these are the red fluorescent so if it uh, hard to amplify, uh, the, the green usually uh, to mm, color the centromere. So Herceptin uh, is the drug of choice when the uh, HER2 gene is amplified. HER2 is the uh, gene which is found on the chromosome 17. So uh, chromosome number 17 is marked with uh, the centromere of the uh, the chromosome with green color to count the number of chromosome and HER2 is colored with the red uh, probe. And if spot is more than two per cell, it means one uh, cell has two HER2 because uh, the duplicate of the, the chromosome, this is a normal uh, 2N chromosome. 
But if it is amplified and you see more dots, red dots per cell, it means the HER2 has been amplified and this is the case of the breast cancer. So this candidate uh, is uh, for the Herceptin drug. This uh, patient should be given the Herceptin. In this slide, you can see even more uh, easily. In this slide, if we can focus, you can see the red, red dots are more than the green one. So it's one cell, you have two uh, centromer dots, and then you have more red cell. So red cells, uh, red dots are more in numbers. That means uh, you have this uh, HER2 being amplified, naturally amplified. It should be two uh, uh, genes of HER2 per, per cell, but if it is more, it's mean naturally amplified, and it's an abnormal situation, and it can uh, be re reversed with the drug Herceptin. So Herceptin can be given to this patient and this uh, treatable with that drug if this uh, gene has been amplified. So FISH is uh, the technique which is, uh, can be used for the chromosome, study of the chromosome, any of the loci on the chromosome, uh, they exist or not, are ampli uh, they are amplified, quantified, uncultivated and uh, cultivated organism in natural environment samples within an organism like uh, or in enrichment, we can do this. And then we can do it for monitoring of population dynamics. Uh, we can identify genetic disease based on the uh, chromosome. Uh, uh, is any anything wrong on the chromosome numbers or genes? or mapping of the chromosome, we can use this for a particular uh, fragment or genes of the DNA. There are some limitation as well, but uh, uh, we can, uh, like we cannot do the whole uh, study on just on fish, but it give us a gross insight. Uh, we, if we need a sequence based study, then we can, we, we, we can do that on uh, sequencing. So, there are other techniques uh, which are uh, like one of the techniques we call uh, sequencing. Se se sequencing is the technique which is uh, providing uh, complete input of the um, nucleotides, uh, sequence of the nucleotide, complete spelling of the, the DNA. And if there's anything wrong on the, on the chromosome, we can uh, identify exact uh, sequence or uh, meaning of those uh, change. If any, any mutation occur, as a point mutation, if there's any deletion of the fragment of the DNA, we, we, the sequencing will tell us. If there's any deletion and addition of the nucleotide, so all these inside uh, details can be provided with the sequencing technique. We have the Sanger sequencing, uh, then we have the NGS, uh, next generation sequencing. So it can be done with, with those uh, techniques. So if you have any, any question, uh, feel free to ask if I am available. Uh, if so far, any, any questions so far? I can uh, ask uh, Nihat to unmute. Uh, you can drop on the, the chat box as well. Nihat, if any, any student has any questions uh, so far, we can reply the question. Okay, so if, uh, if there's no question, then we can end the session over here. And if you have any question, I'm still here available. Hello.
Okay, so if there any question, we, we are here to answer. Uh, I will summarize the whole lecture because uh, the genetic techniques are based on the four letters. I will repeat the four letters are the four nucleotides called adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. If you can understand these four alphabet of the life, then all the techniques uh, on the molecular biology and genetics are based on these four letters. So these four letters uh, provide the inside details. So from DNA, uh, that is the message is uh, inside in the DNA, which is transferred in terms of uh, messenger RNA, which is called transcription. And the transcribed message then translated into particular amino acid or protein, which are the executing molecule. So these, the DNA should be intact. The message should be intact. If there's any change in the DNA, we call it mutation or changes which is then uh, obviously uh, if there's any change it uh, comes in terms of genetic diseases mutation or change could be good or bad in some cases as well but as i give an example of the sickle cell anemia a single nucleotide change lead to a genetic disorder and a uh, very bad uh, disease and there are some other are even more lethal so just because of the change in those four letters so we need to know the, the meaning of these alphabets or the four uh, nucleotide. And that's, that's why we have techniques like uh, Southern blotting, Northern blotting, Western blotting, uh, RFLP, recession fragment length, polymorphism. And we have PCR, polymerization reaction, different types of PCR, real-time PCR, uh, reverse transfer PCR, conventional PCR, and uh, different other now latest technology, uh, the PCR are coming with new technology. And the current scenario, you have this uh, coronavirus, which is detected by real-time PCR, reverse transfer test PCR. So this is one of the application of the, the PCR and through which you are de detecting the genetic material of the virus. So you, you can detect a genetic material of the virus, you can detect the genetic material of human or any of the pathogen or any of the organism. So this uh, technique is very powerful. Then you uh, have a fish fluorescent in situ hybridization, which uh, identify uh, the uh, sequence on the chromosome and, and the intact cell, uh, which provide you the, the exact location of the, the chromosome or the gene. Okay, the question is, uh, did I mention any other step uh, after the elongation? No, it's just uh, three steps we have. The, the first is denaturation, uh, then the annealing, and the last one extension or elongation, these three steps of the PCR. And then uh, we have cycles, different cycle of these uh, three steps. So usually we have 30 cycles, 35 cycles. So sometimes we have 40 cycles. So. The cycles is the, the next uh, combination of these three steps. So we have three steps, uh, denaturation, extension, uh, annealing, and extension or elongation. So we have three steps. Uh, so then what are step uh, uh, types of body samples that we get to carry out uh, these things? What are the types of body samples? Okay, so the genetic material lies in uh, many samples, like blood sample is the one of the best sample for any genetic uh, study. But if it is uh, some cases we don't have the blood, then uh, we can have like, like uh, the tooth material, then we have hair follicle, the skin cells, uh, different body fluid, uh, semen samples, saliva, uh, vaginal fluid then in terms of different uh, uh, forensic cases and any any body uh, part so these are the bone the bone tissue so these are the samples through which we can detect uh, um, any of the um, genetic uh, disease or uh, forensic scenario we can resolve with these techniques and for infectious disease we, we may need a sample from the site of infection like these uh, days, if I take uh, example of the coronavirus, then we have uh, the um, nasopharyngeal swab, the uh, oropharyngeal swab. Yes, and now we have all these techniques. If anyone is interested, uh, they can visit my lab uh, at the molecular pathology. 
the zero biology building on the uh, first floor on the blood bank so we have all these techniques available feel free to come and see the techniques we do the covid testing uh, currently so we are leading uh, that for covid testing that is real time pcr and we detect all different cancers uh, different genetic diseases so uh, if anyone interested uh, they can come and see and see. we do the fish as well for her too so you can see the slide of fish you can see gel electrophoresis it's on d uh, s and dimc the dimc uh, beside dimc building is a taller building usually named with the zero biology building called a zero biology building or uh, these uh, the blood bank is also there so on the ground floor we have blood bank and on the first floor we have the molecular pathology section this are in dimc okay so any other question and the, the latest technique is the sequencing so next generation sequencing we call ngs and then sanger sequencing those are the techniques uh, which are the latest technology and can provide inside details so thank you so much for being here if you have any question i will leave my email address uh, feel free to uh, mm, send me an email this is my email address and nihat can also give you my email address sir kar de mute can we meet sir So this is the email address you can provide. Okay, thank you so much.